I'm going to love you. I've always loved you. But you... Something is happening in a small Appalachian community. Something dark. Something sinister. Something haunted. Something haunted. Brought to you by Visual Vindication. Written and directed by the Van Scoy Brothers. All right, welcome back. We're sitting here with the Van Scoy Brothers, Tim and Lonnie, the creators of Something's Haunted. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hello. Um, so you guys have been, how long have you guys been working on this movie for? Man, we've, we've been in Something Haunted for a long time. I, I, I think the initial write-up of the script itself, it, it probably took us a good seven, eight months for the original, wouldn't you say, Tim? Yeah, six, seven, eight, somewhere around there. I mean, it, it was in 2007. I mean, you're going on seven years now. That's I do know it was somewhere in that area, yeah. Uh, and that was, you know, formulating the ideas and then putting it onto the paper. And uh, the, the constant battling back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I remember several times it, it almost went from uh, verbal to physical a few times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, me and me and my brother, man, we <laughs> we laid in, in a basement. And I, I have to say, 10 hours at a time, we would just plug away, plug away, writing, writing. And we'd argue back and forth over certain things with characters and dialogue and, and action scenes, I mean, it just, you know, whatever happened to be the topic, man, it would get pretty hostile at times, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, you know, I don't get it, like, I know Kevin Williamson, Williamson wrote a script in, like, 12 hours or something like that for Scream, and it's like, how? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, you must have really thought about the movie before you sat down to write it, you know? Yeah, that, that sounds more like maybe he just did a did an overview or an outline of the script for the most part and it kind of winged it once they were in the process of filming because I'm telling you initially when we wrote it how many pages did we have to uh, I think it was like one maybe 135 to 140 but you also have to take into account that we didn't have the you know we didn't know the uh, industry you know typical fonts that they use and the outlines and all that. So, I mean, we we I believe we actually had smaller font than you're supposed to use. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was actually even more. Mm. But once we got everything set down and you know did some trimming and different things, it got a little bit lower. I still think it's pretty lengthy for a horror movie. I mean, not that that's a bad thing. Well, I know, I know it's typically supposed to be a minute a page, on average. Yeah, but. Mine's only like twenty pages, and if I turn on the um the auto read back, it takes it about thirty five right. forty minutes so yeah you nice you, yeah. you would be surprised how much how much screen time you can really take up and that's that's the other thing about the filming process I mean, just like with the teaser the teaser trailer that we were filming, you know just getting. <laughs> getting one scene where we have our one of our main actors, Michael Duran, coming down the sidewalk and just trying to get everything right. You've got traffic and you have all these different things to, <laughs> you know, get into the mix and you're you're recording ambient sound, you're recording his sound, you're planning ahead for what you're gonna have to do in the editing process and you'd be amazed. Thirty seconds of time with actual filming becomes sometimes an hour and a half to two hours just to get captured right. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, you know, with mine, it seemed, because it's only, like I said, 15, 20 minutes, but I read it back and I visualize it. It's like, no, this is like 30, 30 minutes easy into the film, you know? Yeah. So maybe, tw you know, maybe 20 at the minimum, but I don't see it being only 20 because I've got so much in there. Right. Well, sometimes people can take a paragraph to say, you know, what can be chopped down into a few details and end up saying the exact same thing. So, you know, maybe you're just good at packing a lot of detail into a sentence or two. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, 
your your mm-hmm. visuals your visuals are a, a lot of the times a lot different than what you are putting on paper because you're breaking it down to make it more simple for everyone involved. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, then your then your vision takes it down a totally different road. So it might say one thing as far as time is concerned, but in your mind you're seeing what it actually is. And I mean it it will end up being forty minutes into a film before you realize it. Well, yeah, because right now I'm still, I'm barely past the point where last time I talked to you, Lonnie, was, and then I figured out what to do, but it's like, so I figured out what to do, and I get them separated, but it's like, shit, now what do I do, (laughs) you know, (laughs) it's like, damn, okay, you know, because I'm trying not to make it mimic much, but it's sometimes I guess you have to, you know. Right. Wait. You know, you 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 build the the story. I think the way that that we came up with ours is we put all of the details together and we figured out what kind of story we wanted, and then we added certain elements that you know we felt would really fit into the film and make it that much more frightening, that much yeah, you know, more intimidating to watch. I mean, it's yeah. It, it, wouldn't you say so, Tim? I mean. Oh, pretty. definitely. I mean, we, we, uh, I think it probably took about a month and a half to two months of us discussing it before we actually even put anything to paper. Um, one thing that's really important to remember is don't try to get your final draft on your first draft. I mean, if you need to, oh yeah, just go with it. And uh, you know, when you finish, go back through, and then you can, you know, fine tune it a lot. And if you see things you don't like, you can take them out then. If you just go with it, you're going to end up with mounds, of, you know, tons of pages. Um, and by the time you, you know, cut it all out, you might end up with a story. You'll have to go through a few drafts. I mean, it was madness. We finished it in, uh, I believe, October or November of 2007. And we didn't really have what we considered to be necessarily a final draft for a couple more years. Yeah. Yeah, see, this one, this story, I think I told you, Lonnie, the story's been in my head for since before horror fans, and I just right. never sat yeah. down to write it. And the only thing that stayed the same, really, was the beginning intro. For some reason, that beginning intro I've always wanted. I don't know why, but it's always stayed the same, and it's the only thing that stayed the same in my head. Yeah. But I was, like, dead set to keep that the beginning intro like like I have it. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like, yeah. which Tim, I'll have to send it to you so you understand what I'm talking about. But okay, but yeah, the two girls walking in and then getting separated has always been there, and that's the way I started it again. And I was going to change, it, and it's like no, because it works. You know, it just it throws you in right away. There's no delay on what's going on. You know, yeah. there's 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 no build up. It just literally happens. You know, right. Well, there, there's other things that, you know, he and I collaborate on everything that we write. But the, the main thing that we try to do is, is stick to the main idea. You gotta, you gotta try and figure out, you know, where your story's going. And if you see that as a problem, one of the things that we found that we can do is figure out other things we want in what we're writing. Yeah. And if you find other things that you want in what you're writing, and you can build on to that and expand sometimes from the middle to the beginning, sometimes from the middle to the end, sometimes from the end backward. It just depends on what it takes to get it completed. Yeah, because I'm, Laura, like I said, I'm using Final Draft, and I'm glad I am because mm-hmm. making changes in that and going back and reading it, you know, and checking for scenes and stuff is so much easier, you know, yeah. than trying to put it all on Notepad and hoping that you can find. You know. isn't, isn't that how we started doing ours, Tim? I think it was. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty envious of you. You know, I think I used Final Draft like once, and I wish I had it. I just never broken down and gotten it. I think we it wasn't Notepad. I think it was Works Microsoft Works Word Processor, which is only like one step up from Notepad. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm and not going to say it was pretty, but it worked. You guys are still casting now, right? Yeah, we're actually, uh, I can 
Uh, we've had, you know, the two casting calls already. Um, the first one was closed because we, you know, again, I was unfamiliar with exactly how to run it, and I didn't know if we'd have any uh, hiccups, and I just did a sort of a test run. The second one was open. Um, number three, we're shooting probably mid-December. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have one more. I don't... Um, hope, we're hoping to, you know, hold it here in Huntington, West Virginia again. But there's a chance, you know, it could change maybe a neighboring city. Not that we want to move out of the city. We just want to kind of expand our reach a little bit to people that, you know, maybe couldn't make it to Huntington. Um, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, we had a lot of people that were showing up from Kentucky and Ohio and, and surrounding states, and you know, surprisingly enough. And, I mean, they, they, drove, they drove quite a way, some of them four and six hours. Yeah, we'll be we there for the uh, second casting call. Not uh, not not just Kentucky. Uh, there were a couple from North Carolina. Um, they would make that a trio, actually, not two. Uh, so I mean, you're talking they came here from a ways away. I I would expect you know probably even further distances from you know for the third one. Uh, we do try to. We, it has been one of our main goals to stick you know keep it local. That's been our saying since pretty much day one but uh, you know if there's an amazing actor we come across is from somewhere else you know we're not gonna uh pass them up just because they're from there you know they came all the way here they they're spending time in huntington uh you know, we'll use them they don't have to necessarily be from here it's just you know our preference well yeah i mean you definitely don't want to pass up wasted of talent you know um, but no, I did see on your guys' pages that you guys were putting up names of people. Are, are those people that you already chose or just like your top runners? Yeah, uh, those are ones we've already chosen. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're being featured. They've, they've already gotten their parts and they've already gotten their copies of the, the script and their, you know, their, their role they're going to be playing and, and, we're just kind of trying to give everyone an idea of who we've got and where they're from and just give them a little insight into to the actors and actresses that are going to be in the film. How many um, uh, roles have you filled in so far? Uh, major roles, I would probably say about... It's kind of sad I can't remember exactly because <laughs> we've recently added like three. Um, I think it's around 15. Uh, smaller roles, I would probably say about uh, 10 to 15 more, you know, just one line roles or stand ins, different things, because a lot of people around here, they want to do stuff. They just don't, you know, want a big part. I, I think that they'll be kind of embarrassed if they have to watch themselves. Right. Which I understand uh, that. That's why we're not sitting on video right now. <laughs> so, for everybody out there, that's why we do this on audio is because of my personal preference. So you know, the most the most inc incredible thing for me is, you know, you you're not really sure when you start promoting your your project and your your belief and your dream. You're not really sure who or how many people you can reach. And surprisingly enough, you know, early on for years, you know, we reached. We reached an established actor, which is Dave Vecchio, you know. And, and at the time when we initially had had talked with him, I mean, he was doing commercials and just a few things here and there. And he, you know, he recently started a major film with Alec Baldwin. Oh, I mean, nice. you, you'd just be surprised who you can actually reach. And I recently had a had a letter from another girl that I'm I'm not going to mention her name because I really haven't been able to secure her for anything. Yeah. She's extremely interested, and when I got the letter, I was surprised because the first thing I seen was from West Hollywood. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 pretty amazing. I mean, we've we've really been getting out there. There are people that are seeing it, and that you know that was the most important thing for us because in the beginning, we were we were just afraid people wasn't taking it seriously because, like I said, you never know. You know, when it's your dream. You don't know how many other people are going to believe in your dream. Well, yeah, and things take a while. You know, I mean, 
Well, once you guys, I, I firmly believe once you guys start the initial filming and start doing like, you know, like your trailer and things like that, I think people will start coming in more, you know, because there's stuff to read about, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have our uh, interview right now, but that's that's no indication of how our filming is going to look. I can tell you, though, the trailer looks beautiful. I really can't wait to put it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, we we really went we went out on the limb, and I mean we we pushed ourselves to go for the best of what we could get our hands on. I mean, we we got a fantastic camera. We had great sound equipment, everything really, I mean, it just really was everything that we were hoping it would turn out to be. And it was beautiful before we even started doing any of the editing. The footage yeah. was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, our actors showed up ready to work. Uh, it was still, you know, a really long day. I mean, we were going from, uh, like, I know a few of the days you were talking eight in the morning, we get finished around 11 at night or midnight. Yeah, which uh, eight is a bit of a late start as far as that sort of stuff goes. But, uh, you know, again, using people around here, you know, most people have lives. We can't just, we can't all fully commit to something like this. But uh, considering, you know, the time we had, I, I was really proud of everyone. Well, uh, and, and proud of the fact that no matter what they, they may have been tied up having to do in their own life, they made the time to be available when we requested for him to be there. Yeah, that's always good. Yeah, so, you, you know, they they believe in the project. They've, they've seen it in action. It's just people that haven't been able to see it in action that we're trying to put the belief in. So, oh, yeah. for everybody that doesn't know out there, um, what's the rough draft, I mean, what's the rough idea about what the movie's about? Uh, how about we take turns on that one? <laughs> I mean, it's a complicated story. It's really kind of difficult to boil it down to, uh, you know, a little bit. Um, at its core, you know, I'm, again, this is something I've been very, not just me, we, we've we been very protective of this. Uh, I mean, if you really wanted to take out the, you know, so story somewhat, it's technically about two guys that work in a haunted house, you know, like a haunted house attraction where people pay to be scared and, they begin murdering people um, at the place, and you know uh, you're going to hear screaming, of course, when the people when they're being murdered. You know the other customers, but typically when you hear screaming at a haunted house, what do you think? Oh, that's just some of the effects. Uh, you'd never imagine in a million years, you know, that somebody was being killed. Um, the 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 other the other aspect of this story that you know, I, I think is going to make it a great film is we've included a lot of elements of our own life. Mm. Yes. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of horror films that don't really include a, a, a real backstory, something that you can really feel and, and develop feelings and, and a love for certain characters and a, a hate for certain characters. You know, a, a lot of it's just about, well, let's see where we can make this splatter and that splatter. Right. And we didn't really want to go that direction, even though the film is, is going to be controversial. It, it's going to be violent. There's going to be gore. But it's not going to be overdone. It's going to be justifiable because we don't want to take away from how in-depth and how deep the story is because, as you said, you, you know, the, the horror side of this is, is the two killers. But, you know, this, this spans back through both of these guys' lives. You know, you, yes. you, get to, you get to see where they come from, what made them become who they are. You get to know these characters from their, their early beginnings. And then you yes. get to see how the experiences of their life transform them into the murderers they've become today. And, you know, he, uh, he said, you know, all the gore is justifiable in the killing. Yeah. Uh, I might be, you know, I'm not going to, I'm confident I won't be eating my words when I say this. <laughs> Every single element of the story that, you know, has a kill in it, uh, it, it's not just thrown in there to, you know, up the gore. It's for a purpose. Like everything has a meaning. There's a reason it happens, whether it be, 
you know, there's a knife on the table that was convenient for this guy to grab. I mean, someone doesn't just bust out of a closet and start chopping people up randomly for no reason. Uh, you know, they're all clear motives and um, everything has logic to it. Yeah, because I personally, um, I've said this before, and you, most people that know me get to know this. I don't, I'm not a heavy gore person, you know. Um, right. When it's justifiable, that's fine. Um, usually I stay away from movies like Hostel and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But movies like Hatchet, which has a lot of gore, but it makes sense with the movie. And um, mm-hmm. what was that other one? Um, Feast. Feast, that's it. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah, I know that. Okay, um, let's start this again. Yeah, in in movies like Feast and stuff, I don't mind those because, you know, yeah, they're gory, but they're not, you know. The torture element is what bothers me, really, you know, whenever people are needlessly tortured. See, that's that's kind of where, where, as he said before, you know, we've we've created a backstory. And and this is something that really consumed a lot of our time is all of the characters have their own backstory. Oh wow. Yeah. And you know, we've we've developed it so much so that if we wanted to create another film entirely about a separate character's life, we could do that. Because we, we know their entire backstory. Oh, okay. And yeah, we we just you know, there's no no better way to know your characters and know the people that you intend them to be, you know, especially from, from a writer or director standpoint, then if you know where they come from, who they were, who they are, who you need them to be on screen. So it's possible. So it's possible that you guys could have multiple movies based on, depending on the character or the brothers or whatever. (laughs) Well, I uh, absolutely. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're like we uh, Well, we've discussed it, you know, but uh, it's a little difficult because we're, you know, you have to kind of think about if you want to extend your, you know, if you want to extend into multiple movies, you just make it, you know, a standalone. That's that's a big decision. I mean, it would definitely be something that would be neat to see. I mean, it's not a common thing to do, you know. Um, it's yeah. not too many times where, like, on Hellraiser they take, um, you know, Doug Bradley's original character and make it into his own movie, you know, so. Yeah. Or the human form. Yeah. If we could make sure that it was up to the quality of this one, then I would say uh, absolutely we would. Yeah. So and what the thing is we we really just we we pulled out all the stops with this one and you know we we took the best of all of our creativity rolled it into this one giant ball and we threw it on paper and that's what something haunted is so if we do end up spawning a part two then it's going to have to be better than that giant ball of creativity the first time <laughs> right absolutely. Which, as long as you guys don't turn it over to somebody else, I think you have a good chance. I mean, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, we've, we've, you know, there were a lot of ideas we had that we wanted to put into the, you know, this one, but it just didn't make sense logically with everything else. I mean, we don't want to just throw a random scene out there if it doesn't fit in. So, I mean, you know, conceivably we could take those and build a story around that involving the characters. I mean, it's definitely possible. We we're, we're just we're we're a uh, we're very critical of, of bad second and third parts to a great story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you know, I, I can't can't stand that. Well, you got to figure most of those movies are stretched off from, you know, like take the Friday the Thirteenth series. Every, a different director and writer were pretty much on every movie, and then when it finally got back to the original guy, you know, um, Cunningham when he did Jason Goes to Hell. Mm-hmm. He was like, I don't want Jason in it. So they didn't have Jason in it. You know, <laughs> right. that was the whole purpose behind that because he he was pissed off from the get-go that they had actually incorporated Jason into it. You know, so yeah. 
Right. You know, really, it, you know, as long as you guys don't deviate from that, I think it'd be fine, you know. See, it's the same thing with the Saul series, too. Yeah. You know, in, in my personal opinion, it's been way overdone. And maybe I wouldn't feel that way if they had kept the original men in charge on that project. But they let after, go of that project. Yeah, after number three. Yeah. Would Although, you... Uh, had a different direction on two and three, but same writer. <clears throat> Which I I actually like the Saw series, but not entirely. I really like the fact that they bring on something new every show. They don't. It all lines yeah. up. You, you know what I mean? It didn't deviate right. from really the original story. They just totally yeah. changed how they did it. Right. You know. So by the time you get to the last one, it all makes sense. And I really did enjoy that, that they actually did that. And that's what kept me watching the Saw films. Yeah. And see, that, that's that's the other thing with when you're talking about, you know, a part two and a part three is that we've we've written a lot of different types of, of scripts and films. And, you know, another one that we've kind of delved into has also been comedy and things like that. So if there there was to be a part two, you know, it would most likely be after we had ventured down some other avenues. Oh, yeah. Well, it also goes back into, the, like, um, one of our other featured artists, um, which will be on the podcast soon, Nathan Thomas Milliner. Mm-hmm. On his personal page, he had done a review and said, you know, a lot of people didn't like Friday 13th Part 2 because it deviated from the um, original or f- from the storyline. Right. You know, and he brought up a good point. He's like, but it didn't deviate from the storyline. Part three did. So therefore, there, from that point on, it caused it to deviate from the storyline. You know, mm-hmm. and so like I said, as long as you guys stick with it and don't, like you were saying, don't turn it over to anybody else. You know, it's your creativity. So, you know, I mean, I don't see it right. moving away from what you guys originally planned out to it. Unless you kill off everybody at the end. <laughs> then it might be kind of stupid to create a sequel. <laughs> you know, right. so... Well, we can't give that away. <laughs> no, of course Well, I, I, I will tell you this much. Um, I'm working on a, a possible hardcover-style comic book. Oh, nice. Based, based off of the Something Haunted film, and I actually did some original artwork that you can view on my page and on the Something Haunted page just to give an idea of where the direction of the art would be headed if I did do so. And it's it's really gotten a lot of support. People seem to really enjoy it a lot. So it it may be something we may do and we'll come together on the artwork and and the storylines and maybe branch off into other characters in their lives because a lot of these characters are, are also just as outlandish as our killers in different ways. Yeah. You know, we we could we could really depict their life in maybe a hardback comic book style. It's just something we're discussing right now. Well, that would be yeah, cool. Um, we've actually, I uh, obviously can't mention any names, but we've had a few um, models from this area say, you know, that would be awesome. I'd love for you to draw me. Uh, you know, I'm not much when it comes to drawing or anything like that. I can do some graphics work on the computer, but. He's the he's the drawer there, so who's that? You should definitely check uh, Lonnie. He's the okay. you know he's he got that part of the creativity. Um, you should definitely check out the uh, one image we well that has been released so far that he uh, drew up. It's fantastic. It's on the page. Um, I'll actually share it again here shortly. Uh, you know, I'll keep that on there. You know, it's, it's funny you guys bring up. Um, about what the movie's about, um, and that's because I had released it in our first po- second podcast. I'm sorry, after Lee Howard, um, mm-hmm. me and Eric Wickley Demented were talking, and our original plan when I first met him is that we were talking about doing haunted houses, right? Where you actually get the feeling that somebody's being killed, like people will come missing from the group and all that. So, <laughs> you know. Nice. And I only think about that because right when you said that, I was like, holy crap, you know, <laughs> if we ever do it, get them there. And then, you know, 
And then definitely invite you guys out to that. Oh, oh yeah. That'd be fantastic. I mean, it, there's, there's just so many, so many things you can do with, with horror in general. And it, it just always amazes me how many times I have to, had to explain to people that horror is not gore. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't mean to go back to that, but I, I wanted to throw that in earlier is that horror is a whole lot more. It covers a broad category. It's, you know, it, it is definition. It's, you know, an, an insight of tremendous fear. And that, that covers a whole lot of ground in that, that genre. Which is why we don't really touch on it a whole lot because we want people I want people to come to my to, to come to the horror fans website. I don't I can't even call it mine. Um for people to come to the horror fans website and see everything, you know, the beauty and all that. You know, that's why I do cemetery shots is because I don't want people to see cemeteries as being spooky. You know, right. really I I'm pointing out the beauty of them mainly, you know. I do do some spooky shots, but it's more or less the beauty of them and everything. You know, so it, it ties into the same thing. Right. Yeah, people typically view those as gloomy. You can see that thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, and really it's not because I can go out there with my camera and sit it just wherever I can. I won't sit on the graves. Um, You know, I'll just sit and I'll sit and I'll look. You know, and I love it because it's highly peaceful, you know. Right. Absolutely, I can. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure you. I'm sure you. You get a lot of the same, the same approaches from people that I get when I tell them that I love taking pictures of spiders and tarantulas. <laughs> you yeah, know, I, I, I have an obsession with them, and I've you know I've even talked to Tim about, <laughs> hey, you know, arachnophobia was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I could you know you put a glass in front of me or something for that i'll I'll do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i do get that look until i show them the picture of the two angels the one i really push now um right the one that's pretty much all black black and white or dark black and white until i because sh- i have those in my car until i show people those i do get that look but right when i show them those they like their like mine explodes and they get a totally different outlook on it. You know, so yeah. which is also like I said, that's why I, kind of why I do the side is so people can get to know the other side, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there there's there's a beauty to it and that's that's another thing that I push when I when I talk about there's there's a beauty to brutality, there's a beauty to horror, there's a beauty to all these things and and People are, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And you're kind of capturing something along that, that same line with taking those pictures. You know, a lot of people, they'll go by a cemetery and they see it as something spooky or, you know, they wouldn't think, they wouldn't even think about taking five minutes of their day. Yeah. Take a walk in the cemetery and have a seat and just look around. Yeah. Now, there's one that I go to that is totally, it freaks me out every time. It's that weird looking. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, and you hear a bunch of sounds in the background too. So it's really a it's spooky good. cemetery. I will, I won't yeah. sit in that one. I'll stay in there for a long time, but I won't sit. Plus it's all overgrown and you can't really tell where you're sitting. But no, you know, I right. mean, as far as that, anybody can blow up a car. Anybody can create fire effects. Anybody can shoot a gun. I mean, hell, they got things, I mean, I got friends posting up on their personal timeline of an app they've got now for iTunes, you know, iPhones or Androids, I don't know. But it creates explosions that look pretty damn good. And right. it's like, but you can't replicate somebody losing their arm on an application. Yeah. And you have to do it convincingly. So yeah, the yeah. art forum on horror movies is there, just unfortunately there's 2000 that were thrown together in a matter of a couple hours, you know? <laughs> right. Well, that's, that's why, that's, that's why we're kind of sticking along that line of, you know, you can replicate a lot of things, 
but you cannot replicate a true passion and a natural creativity and a drive for for writing and, and script writing and things along those lines because when you can put it to, to paper, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna replicate that. No. They can't do that with an app. They can't do that with you know, that's coming from your own mind, that's coming from your your own passion for what you're trying to create. Yeah. yeah we, uh, that's we, why I have so much that's why I have so much respect for you as well with with your script writing too. Thank you. Yeah, that's the one thing that feels feels good, you know, I've shown probably about twenty people the first part of the script only. I'm to the point now where I won't really release it but to a couple people. But um I have not gotten one negative comment back. You know, not one yeah. you should change this nothing like that and it really actually makes me feel good because even my um my best friend don which by the way he's gonna get pissed if i don't mention this this podcast was partly his idea (laughs) just so he knows and eventually he will be on there because actually he was supposed to be on like everything with me but he's not but anyways yeah so this is my shout out to him finally fourth fourth or fifth podcast in um yeah But even, he was like, that's really good, you know. He's like, I could actually get into that. I mean, I know it needs work, but for being the first one, you know, the the first draft of it. So, I just don't have, you know, I'm just trying to fit that in with everything I do with horror fans. And you guys definitely understand that one. Oh, absolutely. So, what led you guys, like, um, what led you guys up to this point? Like, what was your horror growing up? You know, wow! <laughs> I'll let you go first. And yes, we're going all the way back as far as you can remember. Okay, um, you know, obviously our father was a huge fan of movies, and I think that sort of led into you know our love for them. Uh, he obviously, well, looking back, it seems like he favored horror movies, so uh, he would let us watch them occasionally with him, you know. Uh, censorship's crazy today and we haven't gone out and axed someone to death or something so you know it couldn't have affected us too badly um, mm-hmm. but of course he didn't he didn't let us watch the really bad ones um the worst one for me at the time was probably watching the howling because you know it had some nudity and all that skin tearing which today of course seems incredibly tame and as we got a little bit older you know we moved on to uh, the great peter jackson's uh brain dead um, which we just knew was dead alive back then. Uh, he wouldn't let us watch that, of course, you know, but when he walked out the door, we'd pop it straight into the TV and, you know, watch the thing. Um, I was probably, you know, like I said, seven or eight, so it it seems realistic at that age, but, you know, now it's like, yeah, that's, it was all real to me back then, though. Uh, you know, we love that kind of stuff. <clears throat> So, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I was just kind of making sure he was still there. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah, he's there. Um, yeah, I don't say a lot whenever you guys are talking because the first one I had, I could he- I ended up cutting my, myself talking because it really didn't make much sense. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll start. I guess I'll start with mine. Um. You know, I, I say fortunately now, uh, at the time, you know, I had to say most definitely it was unfortunate. <laughs> My oldest oldest brother, <laughs> he he made it a point to make sure that I watched Freddy Krueger <laughs> when I was four and five years old. And, you know, he, he would pull pranks, he would put Freddy Krueger in, and he'd turn the lights up in the house and run to the bathroom and lock the door. When no one else was home, <laughs> it, it, you know that's just that's one of, of many tricks. I, I know he he waited until I went to sleep one night, and my parents weren't home, and he turned on Freddy Krueger and he snuck up behind me and started taking his fingernail and just you know scraping the top of my head. <laughs> nice, and, you know, just scary, scary. And you you know, a little kid, you're scared him to death. But of course, he was entertained by it. He's a major horror fan himself. Yeah, but you know, it, it was it was Freddy Krueger for me, and and Night of the Living Dead, 
And, you know, as I got a little older, some of the stuff that I managed to get my hands on that Tim and I would watch together, you know, we watched, uh, I think it's the, the Tales from the Crypt, the Tales from the Dark Side, the the Creep Show stuff, <laughs> yeah, things yeah, like that. Yeah. I, I remember that one that had uh, Jerry Stiller in it, the werewolf family or whatever that was? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Monsters, the TV show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we... We watched Monster the T V show and you know, we I I think that you know, a lot of a lot of parents today, you know, they really censor a lot of that stuff because of a lot of the things that are happening in schools and things like that. But you know, back then, you know, our, our parents started realizing we were developing a love for it. We started taking their video camera out and making our own films. Mm. Yes. And and that's that's been one of the main things is we've got so many movies from the time we were just little kids together, you know, that we were going out and we were actually writing little stories up and having our friends act out the parts. And yeah. we're planning on creating a completely separate DVD from that time all the way up to where we are now with all of those many films that we made along the way and releasing that along with something hard. Right. Like special features for the disc. Yeah. Um, I remember just a funny memory from that. We would take this old stereo that you had and we'd, uh, you know, obviously some of the music's going to have to be changed because we were using copyrighted music, but <laughs> we would play CDs in there and we'd find the perfect songs to uh, go along with what we were doing and blast it and just record it that way. And we prayed that the camera would pick up the sound well enough. You know, usually it did, though. Uh, right. Well, it, it did. We destroyed enough cameras. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd say our parents had to buy four or five of them. Yeah, it, it's but, Christmas. I can't take a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but no, not not to get away from that. I mean, yeah. as I got as I got older, I started finding myself becoming more and more interested. Uh, I really developed a love for Evil Dead, Army of Darkness, and and Dead Alive is pretty much a. a cult classic for me. Yeah. You know, as, as it is for a lot of people. I love that film. The Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre series. You know, I'd, I'd have to say that he's definitely one of my favorites. But, you know, my all-time was Freddy Krueger. I don't know if it was because of the torture I had when I was a kid, but, you know, I I, I definitely love Robert England today. Oh, yeah. So do I. Yeah, I watched yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the drive-in not when originally released, when Drive-Ins used to play like a movie and then they play an older movie. I think yeah. when I was like four years old, my parents took That's me to that in Twilight Zone. <laughs> Yay, parents. <laughs> you had some great parents too, I see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my my history of horror movies goes back, way, way back. Pretty much as far as my sons. So. Right. Yeah, I, I, I love a lot of the stuff that you know, I've, I've talked about, and some people don't even know what I'm referring to, you know, films like Castle Freak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the subspecies series. Yeah. Actually, those are pretty popular, Um, a lot more popular yeah. than that. Well, mainly from people, I, I, I don't know how old you guys are, but I guess around our age, you know, growing up in the early 80s and stuff, you know, into mid-80s. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Around that time is... People from around that time really remember like the subspecies and the um pretty much any full moon movie, you know. Puppet oh yeah. Master. Yeah, Puppet Master. That's another good one. Yeah. So when yeah, did, so what age were you guys when you decided you wanted to do stuff like this? Oh man. <laughs> uh let's see. What we decided we wanted to was way before we actually started doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were just children, honestly. We we were telling our parents we wanted to make movies when we were, what, seven, eight years old, Tim? Yeah. You know, this, this just, I just remembered this. Long before we ever had a camera, you know, we'd sit there as kids and we'd, we'd take turns doing this. One of us would create stories and the other person would, like, go through the story like they were in it. Yeah, like they'd uh, they'd encounter things and pick up items, yeah, and uh, deal with these characters. So I mean, we were pretty much doing that, yeah, like around you know the age he was just seven or eight, 
which yeah. I mean, I, you know, there's a few years between us that we were around there. So you go know, camping trips was the big one I remember. Yeah. We'd go on a camping trip and, and we'd take turns, one of us creating a story in our mind and making the other person make decisions and go through it. And it always ended up being horror. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, there's this uh, giant spider in this sewer, and you have to get your you can find your way around it without it getting you. Something oh yeah. Like that. <laughs> we we started we started really early. It's just something we never gave up on. Yeah, my um. <clears throat> yeah, my creativity started really early. I just never really did much with it. Like I used to like splice together like the video montages back when you had to use VHS. Yeah. Right. And now that I've got digital, I can't do it. <laughs> it doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right, you know. So, but uh, Lonnie, you were saying earlier um, that you were like doing music and all that too. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I was in a heavy metal band for eight years. Oh wow. And oh yeah, we we did a lot of touring. I got to play shows with different bands, Clutch, Shadows Fall, things like that. But, uh, you know, it, that's that's been another one of my loves. I, you know, I actually relate to, you know, someone like Rob Zombie in a lot of ways. Yeah. Because I do a lot of drawing, painting, artwork, do music. You know, it, it just, it's, it's a constant for me. You know, I, I never know when I get up one day what's going to come out of me, whether it's going to be some type of lyrics, a poem, some kind of, you know, lyrical whatever that I come up with and post on Facebook or some kind of painting or another film idea. I never know, but it's always something. Right. And what um, what was the name of the band? Minion. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we were together for a long while. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we we were actually at that time, right about yeah. the time that the band had divided. We had different things going on. Everybody was kind of going their own way, getting a little older, you know, finishing up school, things like that. And one guy was getting married. We were actually on the brink of negotiating a tour in Amsterdam, mm. along with a couple other major bands, and it was. That was a really exciting time, but it all just kind of dropped off before we got the chance. But I still do music, and I'm planning on doing an original song for the film as well. Oh, nice. That's always yeah. good. Plus, yeah, then we'll have something enough. to push on here. So. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. We also have uh, another guy that was in the band we've been working with, the son of two. Yeah, our, our bassist at the time is actually one of our something haunted crew members. And what were you in the band? Lead singer. Oh, were you? Okay. Yeah, lead singer and the writer. Oh, nice. Lyricist. Um, it, it, was a, it was a great outlet for me. It just, you know, I, I found myself writing about a lot of the same things I try to make, you know, films about, making films about. And it, that's why I say all of that artwork's just kind of come full circle to let me back to what I began with. So do you guys have, like, a bunch of movies out there? Like, even just many movies? Or is this your first one that you've really released to the public? We have tons of many movies. This would be the first yeah. week we're actually released. released. Yeah. Um, we have tons of old VHS tapes, that, you know, just sitting there. Are you eventually going to get all those up on YouTube or put out a, you uh, know? I would, I don't know. I would say we'd probably just end up doing like what he said before, you know, just releasing it as sort of a you know, special features type thing. Were well, you guys going to be doing like a Kickstarter thing once you guys uh, get more rolling into the actual production? Yeah, it's either going to be... We may end up doing a Kickstarter and an Indiegogo campaign um, because we're, you know, we're going to need, we're going to need some money for it, of course, our budget. So it's, it'll just depend if we feel confident, you know, we can get the full amount through, you know, by doing the one campaign, we'll probably just do that one. 
but if not, you know, we'll probably split it up and try a couple different, you know. Uh, the, the the reason that we've kind of been holding holding off on that too is we got possible individuals who are interested in financing the film. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, but but you don't, you know, you never you never really know how that's going to end up. Yeah. You always gonna uh, me personally, I I would like to do something to involve the the general public, you know, on a large scale, something like Kickstarter because. What a lot of people don't realize is, yeah, you're you're putting money towards something, but you're getting something a lot of the time that's very unique that no one else is going to be able to get their hands on related to the film that you're putting money toward. And that was a lot of our thing was if we do it, we want to do it and we want to make sure that you're getting something for what you're getting. Yeah. Well, I know sometimes they go really well. Yeah, I've seen some struggle, but eventually they make it, you know. And that's really what it boils down to is what can you get, you know. I think it's smart to get a pretty good, you know, following before you attempt something like that. Uh, we've obviously done a lot of talking about, you know, different things we could give to people to donate to us. And uh, I, I feel good about it. We, it's pretty awesome ideas. Uh, I'd, you know, I'd love to say more, but of course we're going to have to wait on that. Yeah. Well, I think once you guys get the trailer out, like I said, the big thing is giving people something to visualize. You know, I think once you guys get the trailer out, and for everybody listening, of course that'll be, I'll have that up front on the um, website. Um, even on the new one, I'll make a banner for it. Um, and I, I think once that. people see it yeah. visually, then they'll know what they're following. Right, and that was that was kind of kind of our thing before we started, you know, really wanting to to push for any kind of funding. You know, but like I mentioned before, it, it's it's tough in in this region to get people to believe in what you're trying to do. Yeah. So we've wanted to make sure that we accomplish something at the highest level. Something, as I mentioned before, beautiful and brutal. They believe and, and know and understand what it is that we're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't want to name any specific names, but you know, even with the amount of followers and support that we have now, we're really only getting most of our, you know, media, local media attention from, uh, you know, one man, and that's the uh, great Tony Rutherford. He's a friend of mine. Yeah, I mean, he's doing our articles, but I mean, other than that, you know, no one's really covering us. And that, you know, we've submitted things to other people, and they're just they're not taking any interest in it for one reason or another. Um, I think maybe they just don't believe in it. I mean, there's really nothing else like that going on around here. Well, like I said too, I mean, I think it goes along with visual. You don't have anything visual really yet, you know, so people yeah. don't know what they're following. You know, and once you get that point, then I think you guys will get a rush of followers. We'll be, uh, we'll be delivering that very soon. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, even I mean, even I've had people come up say, "Hey, can you promote me?" Okay, what is it? It's like, well, they don't have anything. It's very hard for me to promote. Like you guys will get more promotion out of me once you guys get something that I can circulate. You know. Mm-hmm. And that's where the whole problem lies in, too. It's hard to promote things if you don't have anything, you know, to promote, really. And right now, you don't. All you have is a name. So it get, makes it a little bit harder. And I think that your 700 fans will easily jump up to 2,000, you know, once something circulates, you know. Yeah. And hopefully the 10 people that hear this podcast go to your page and like it. So, yeah. <laughs> I would hope so. So, um, going back, because I, um, I do do a weekly question here right now, because I'm doing a giveaway for a pillow and a blanket set. Um, what's your guys' favorite, like, I, I know you guys like Freddy, but what's, like, your favorite movie growing up? Like, one that you stayed up every weekend watching till 2 o'clock? Uh, does this have to be horror, or... yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That, uh... Ready for for me. Nightmare on Elm Street four. Yeah, yeah. I, I loved it. Yeah, I'd probably have to say the same. We did we did watch that one a lot. Uh, yeah, we did. We watched it a ton. A close second would again probably be you know Dead Alive, but yeah, he's he's probably got it there. Okay, so also so here's a question for the podcast listeners. <laughs> like I said, these questions are always very easy because I don't want anybody to come up with different answers or whatever, you know. Um, the main question of that one is, um, who was the first person? What 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 was the person's name to die in Nightmare on Elm Street Four? The very first character to die. So once they do that, then they write down the first letter of the name, and then they email us. <laughs> See, it's very simple. Okay, so, and like I said, I do that so I don't have to come up with a bunch of different emails. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so I think we see that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What I was going to say was, you see, though, that goes back to more of what I was telling you. What What is the one thing you notice about Nightmare on Elm Street Four? It actually had a lot of characters and a lot of a lot of storyline there. Oh yeah. Compared yeah. to a lot of the other ones. Which after watching um. Never Sleep Again, you realize that that movie should have been more than what it was. Which, growing up, I didn't care that... I thought it was cool that Freddy wasn't there fighting Rick, you know? And, you know, but then they come to find out it was because they didn't have a budget. You know? (laughs) So it's like, they ran out of budget, so they just threw it in there. But growing up, I actually enjoyed that scene, you know? Because that was growing up watching, like, Bloodsport and stuff where... You know, he was blinded and had to fight the guy blind, you know, and things like that. So it really tied into that, and I thought at the time that's why they did it, you know, because Bloodsport was pretty big, and he was doing, you know, even for being released so much earlier. So, but yeah, budget is a big thing. (laughs) It's a major thing. It always is. But, um... So I think we pretty much covered a- everything. Is there anything else you guys want to throw in? Uh, I just mm-hmm. want to thank you for giving us the time to speak with you and uh, get the word out about what we're doing. Oh, it's no problem. And I just, I mean, I really, I mean, I really enjoy being able to work with you guys side by side. And hopefully, once the filming comes up, hopefully, I'll have some money. I'll be able to come up there and, you know, visit you guys on set. And maybe we'll bring you ourselves. There you go. Alright, I want to thank Brian for sitting down with us. I want to thank Tim and Lonnie Vanskoy for coming in and talking to us. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the podcast. Starting next week, we will be having a new new format. Joined once again by Brian. And we'll probably have something new every week after that. If you guys have any idea about what you want us to do, just go ahead and feel free. And email us or contact us on Facebook. And also, and also, if you ever want to join in on conversation, you know what? That's very possible too. Just make sure you have Skype, or you um, just message us with your telephone number when the time comes, and you can join in conversations. We'd love to have you on. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and have a great night.